Good afternoon and welcome to our weekly livestock update. I'm Brownfield news anchor and reporter Megan Grebner with us as University of Missouri Livestock Marketing Specialist Scott uh, Brown. Good to see you. Good to see you, Megan. I'm, as we can see, I'm on the road again this week, so, so I apologize for uh, any, any hiccups in technology. <laughs> no problem. I guess the First thing we're going to lead with is is cattle. Uh, cattle on feed report today. We'll talk a lot about the beef market. Let's start there. And and anything that that we need to to take away from today's report. Well, I think when you look at all the numbers, uh, you know the one that that sticks out from today's report is April placements uh, up seven uh, seven percent. Uh, that that number was well outside of the range of of expectations uh, come, going into that report, uh, with expectations actually on, on average saying we'd be down uh, a percent and a half or so in terms of placements. Um, I, I don't want to be too negative in terms of, of what we see out of that number. We just traditionally be are, are pretty uh, low in terms of placements in April anyway. So although a large percentage uh, deviation uh, uh, c cattle numbers placed isn't really all that high. Uh, and I think when you start looking at the state by state data, you know, places like Texas uh, uh, show up where we uh, certainly had more calves. Uh, placed in, in Texas than we've seen for a while. So I think some in the market already had a sense we might be placing a little more than, than those pre-report estimates might suggest. But uh, again, when you look at it, uh, you know, I think we've been stuck on this same song, Megan, uh, for several weeks now of we've got more cattle supplies coming and, and uh, that's likely uh, going to continue here for uh, the next several weeks. Scott, is there any any reason um, April might be different than some of the other months, and and we saw this this jump in number that we weren't necessarily expecting? Well, I think we continue to 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 wonder whether. So number one, you can say is there a few more calves out there than we really thought all along. As if you want to be more negative about that number, uh, at the same time, um, I, I think some will say, well, we certainly kept some some calves on winter wheat longer, and we're still seeing the the tail end of that getting placed. Uh, in, in the feed yard. Um, I, I will say perhaps feed yards have been a, a, a little aggressive uh, bidding for, for calves at this point as well. Uh, w when you see the, the runs of marketings that, that we've had the last several weeks, it's been very impressive. Uh, certainly suggesting feed yards are staying very current and they may be looking for calves uh, a, a lot harder than they have for a while. So uh, that, that idea of, of pulling things ahead may be uh, coming all the way back now to feed yards pulling harder for those calves to get in the feed yard a little earlier than otherwise would be the case. So again, I think there's both sides of that, uh, but, but at the end of the day, more, more cattle than we expected uh, may be a little negative for us. Does that have more short-term or long-term potential effects on, on market and, and cattle prices? Uh, so I think it comes down to which, which, which side of the story you believe. If, if you think uh, we have more calves than perhaps we, we thought earlier, uh, that that's more uh, negative uh, longer run in terms of just how many cattle we may have to deal with in the latter part of uh, of 2016 and into early 2017. However, you know if if you think we have a pretty good handle on cab numbers and all we're doing is uh, number one pulling ahead here a little bit, um, perhaps we get a run late in the year that uh, could be positive for some of those folks that are wanting to sell some uh, uh, spring calves this fall. So. Uh, again, I, I think it's tough at this point to, to get too good a read, but uh, something that we'll want to keep uh, paying attention to as we look ahead. Staying on the beef trend, let's talk a little bit about box beef prices. They've been uh, uh, in the news a lot this week. Absolutely. You know, we're up pretty strong in terms of box beef prices, up over $12 a uh, hundred this week relative to, to where we were last week. Uh, loins up uh, $24 uh, certainly leads the way. Ribs up uh, strongly as well. Um, it, it begins to show us those higher quality uh, c cuts ha have certainly been pulling uh, the overall uh, box beef price higher this week. Uh, I, I go on to say, you know, when you look at what's been happening to the retail side of this equation as well, uh, steak prices have been moving up much more according to the data that we get from USDA than some of the ground beef. Uh, products have been moving of, of late, suggesting consumers are certainly looking for that higher end product. Uh, I think even things like the announcement that we see from Applebee's where a lot more feature on choice beef in, in this newest campaign uh, that they put on 
uh, I have a hunch that uh, as they procured supplies of, of choice beef, that's that's helped those higher end um, beef prices as well the last few weeks. You know, the choice select spreads the highest uh, that we've seen since uh, going back into the fall of, of 2014. So it's good to see uh, th those higher valued uh, choice beef products moving moving higher as as well. We sit here. Uh, getting ready before long go in the Memorial Day weekend you know I think we're getting additional pull as as consumers think about that uh, long weekend with uh, hopefully grilling a lot of beef uh, in, in in their uh, in their plans let's talk a little bit about that choice select spread how does can you explain maybe a little bit more about what that is for folks that don't necessarily Absolutely. I think when you look at the choice select spread, uh, um, when, when we think about beef that that grade select, uh, that's our uh, near the, the bottom of of the grades that USDA can label uh, that that beef carcass. From there, we go choice. Uh, sometimes we talk about upper choice and and prime at the very high end. So those prime carcasses being the ones that have the most marbling, uh, taking the steaks out of those. Those are the ones that are going to the to the very high end restaurant trade by and large. So I always go choice is, is a better quality of, of beef relative to select in the way uh, USDA grades that. Oftentimes we've seen choice select spreads that have been very narrow, uh, suggesting that there's not a, a, a lot of difference between a carcass that might grade choice and a carcass that might grade select. And, and factors there I, I think are just the quantity of, of choice beef available at different points in time. That spread will narrow a lot when we see a lot of cattle grading uh, grading choice it tends to widen when we have less cattle grading choice. So I always go an economist will have to say both supply and demand matter as you think about uh, where select versus choice versus prime sit. Um, I, I'll often tell cattle producers, boy, there's some some large uh, premiums available for carcasses that can grade prime, and and that can be a, a focus for cattlemen that are trying to, to get additional value out of that product, especially at times when markets are headed down. Um, being able to capture some of that value from a prime carcass um, back through the system can be helpful. Um, and, and I will say some of the genetic uh, uh, information and technology available to cattle producers today I think helps them in terms of those that want to chase uh, that higher end. It's much easier than what, what you used to hear in the past where you got a prime carcass uh, purely by chance. Uh, I will argue today that uh, it's anything by chance that uh, generates some of the prime carcasses that we see. Hey weekend. Uh, we're getting ready uh, for Memorial Day. The weather's been great. How much does that come into play when we're looking um, at, at box beef prices, when you're seeing the sales in the store, and how does that correlate to our cattle and livestock producers? Because I would assume maybe it's helping other protein markets as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you look at uh, the, the pork cutout value, and it's continued to stay strong this week. Um, uh, so I go in the short term, I think it's been been very helpful to the, to the box beef price that we see. I think packers have been able to increase margins uh, as, as well over this period of time and maybe uh, a, a lot of that additional value hasn't made its way all the way to uh, fed cattle prices or, or feeder cattle prices but we want that demand uh, you know we, we want that that kind of demand that that a long holiday weekend can bring for us I just want to make sure that that producers think about the other side of this equation once we get out of that uh, long holiday weekend and get through what's been a, a pretty strong period of time of, of beef sales, I, I have a hunch we'll slow down a little bit and I, I think we, we all know then what may happen to cattle prices and that uh, if, if nothing else helps us, uh, this, this idea of a little more weakness uh, could certainly be on the horizon. Scott, anything else? Anything we're looking forward to or looking ahead to next week? Uh, I think at this at this point, you know, it's it's more of the same uh, in, in terms of what's going on. I, I continue to try to watch what's happening on the export side. I think that's one of the the issues that that will be important for prices as we look ahead. Um, you, you know, we are showing hog prices still higher this week. Uh, we were up Oklahoma City feeder cattle prices this week a little bit. Uh, 
unfortunately we were down on on fed cattle prices and and I, I would say cash fed cattle still running at a pretty significant discount relative to where futures are today uh, somehow we're going to have to narrow that gap as we get into uh, to, to June and and you know one has to wonder whether we take cash prices down to where futures levels are or or vice versa but uh, that's one of the things I think we'll have to watch very carefully as we look ahead that that uh, current gap has to narrow one way or the other as we look ahead. Scott, good to see you. We will talk again next Friday. Very good, Macon.